is Alex Lazarus, and I am so excited today to be back with you doing a great Adobe live stream. Today, we're going to be working on transforming your stock photography uh, with AI generative fill within Photoshop. We'll be bringing it into Express. We're going to be using Adobe Stock. We've got lots and lots of really cool content to show you today, so I'm really, really excited. If you are in chat today, please come on in, say hello, ask your questions. If you're typing on the YouTube side, make sure you come over to the Behance side. It's be.net slash Adobe Live. Uh, and from there, you'll be able to type away, ask all your questions, and we'll we'll kind of take it from there. Um, I love having these streams be super interactive. I love answering any of your questions or incorporating your feedback into this. And today, with AI Generative Fill, uh, this is the perfect stream to be super interactive. I've been thinking about doing some like travel brochures and travel assets with it. I think so. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we can get a little bit surreal with it though. So we can have some fun, get really wild with some of the scenes that we're creating, especially with like some of the generative fill elements. We're going to be expanding your canvases, making sure that if you took something in camera, um, if you took something in camera and you're needing a little bit more extra space, we can use Photoshop to get it further. I see a lot of regulars, Carol, Cody, Crystal, hello, hello. Uh, Pam saying hello, newbie here. Don't worry, Pam, welcome. This is a super welcoming and inviting community, so we're glad to have you here. I see you, Oliver. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good morning. Good after noon, good after evening, good after evening. Wow, that's a word. Uh, wherever you're tuning in from, we welcome you in. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for those of you all who don't know, I'm Alex Lazarus. I run my own little studio uh, called we are Lazarus. You can check out our website at uh, wearelazarus.com. We're getting a new website soon, so enjoy it while you can. But today we're going to be working with Adobe Stock. So if you haven't used Adobe Stock before, you can use uh, free Adobe Stock immediately, or you can also have a subscription to it. You can start with a 30 day free trial, I believe, and then after that, it's $30 a month for 10 assets, which is honestly a really great uh, deal. But if you want to play along with me at home, what's up, Sean? Hello, hello. Um, check it out. The link is in chat. It's stock.adobe.com slash free. And then you can go in there and siphon in through any filters you want to put in there. So maybe it's like travel, I don't know, very generic, but boom, look at that, done. It's a free asset. Um, we can just license it immediately and just boom and then it'll download for me. Yeah, Sean, you're traveling? Where, where'd you pack? Or where are you packing and where are you traveling to? Let us know in chat. All right, so we just downloaded this. It's a free asset from here. I think today's whole theme will go travel. We'll keep it broad with that, have a lot of fun with it. Let's pull it directly into Photoshop. So I'm gonna actually just grab the download for that and then pull it in to my Photoshop beta. If you don't know where to get your beta, make sure you go into your Creative Cloud uh, like browser. And then over here on the left-hand column, it says beta apps. Go in there and you can download Photoshop, Illustrator, all those things. Today we're going to be working within the Photoshop beta. Sean, you're heading to Iceland? That's amazing. Maybe we'll incorporate some, uh, some Iceland photos in here just for funsies. All right. So for those of y'all who have never used generative fill within uh, Photoshop. It's really freaking cool. All right, so what we can do here is maybe that's, maybe we need to expand the canvas. Just do it on both sides. And then all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the rectangle marquee tool. Oh, it's doing um, the, it's automatically doing not transparency, that's okay. I'm gonna do this. Ooh, why is it not showing me? Gonna rectangle bar key tool on both sides and then just click generative fill. And then I'm just gonna click generate. I'm not even gonna type anything in. And from there, it should just give me that seamless background. Sean says, mostly packed, camera gear was packed yesterday. That's honestly your most important thing when you're going to Iceland. You gotta make sure the cameras are all tidy. All right, so now it's doing its generative fill. It's doing a little bit of thinking for us. You can see that in that loading bar right there on the top of your screen. Super duper chill, boom. All right, so that gives us one to three options. I can kind of see the seams in here. Um, let's see if we can get a different. There you go. It's a little too. Let's see if we can 
I think this is the best, but it still has some seams in here. Uh, seams being this like vertical line that you're seeing right in that middle. What we're gonna do here is we're just gonna try to use generative fill to clean its own uh, asset up. So we're just gonna take this down this middle and click to do just right there and then generative fill and then click generate. I'm gonna do it twice, one on each seam and hopefully that should just smooth out that transition really nicely for us. Um, so like I said, this could be a really great one for Sean if he's going to Iceland, maybe he captured something in camera, he loved it, but he realized he needed a little bit more extra on the, the crop and you know, in camera he couldn't do it. So I think this is a really great thing to add a little bit of extra dimension to your photos if you missed it all in capture or if you're working with stock assets like we're doing today. So this works really well for this image. We're going to clean up this seam as well. We can also object select this person and then try to move her into a brand new environment as well. So cool. Those seams are done. I think, let's see. Uh, that, that looks best. Cool. So just really quickly, you can see we've already just built out the environment way more. Uh, it's looking good. So let's take that and we can like group this into another folder, group one. I think we'll just keep playing with the series. What up, Umicorn, how you doing? Uh, we'll duplicate this. Oops, command J, just to duplicate, I'm gonna drag it out of that group and we'll keep rolling with it. So I'm gonna try to select this gal. Boom, object select, you can see it's highlighting her in that foreground. I'm going to grab it and pull it out. So right now I've just selected her. So I'm going to uh, mask. And then I'm going to invert that mask. I'm going to turn it off. Oh no, it was a perfect mask before, question mark. I'm going to invert it here. Cool. So she's there. The question is, what do we want to do about, um, where do we want to place her, y'all? We want to place her, hmm, let me just fix her shoulder real quick. It's going to bother me if we don't. Uh, so what I'm doing here to fix her shoulder is just grab the uh, brush tool on my layer mask, and then I'm just going to brush in that corner real quick. Looks like there's a little bit on the side as well. Uh, it's kind of hard to patch up, so we'll just kind of treat it like that. Maybe we'll just remove some of her skirt in some of this area here. Cool. Maybe we put her in the forest. We'll see. All right, let's try. Um, yeah, let's do that. Generative fill. Uh, mountaintop. Place it in the middle of the city. I could do that. That's a good idea. Let's do that in a second. The city might get a little crazy with some of the AI interpolation, but we can try it absolutely. Let's see here. Generate, generate. You can do it. I think the art, the canvas size is pretty big on this file. I might need to make it smaller so it renders faster. <laughs> Just trying to make it, let's see here. All right, let's see, what's this image size? 300 DPI. That's pretty big. Let's just uh, lower it down to like 72 DPI. And let's do 144. Cool. All right, so let's do
just grab this again. I think I messed it up earlier. Let me just do it right again. Oops. Command J, grab that, pull it up. All right, we should be able to do this better now. Cool, let's grab her and then generative and then generative fill city uh new york city let's see if that helps hello joshua joshua says hello adobe friends welcome welcome today we are working in uh, adobe stock and using ai generative fill in photoshop beta so make sure you guys download it and start playing around with it it's such a cool tool and it's so helpful for retouching um so yeah that's what we're doing today and then we're gonna pull it into express at the end and make some assets with it whoa she's like lady liberty now <laughs> that's crazy that's not what i was looking for nope but <laughs> on the street all right new york city uh street level let's see if that helps <laughs> That's so funny. Might need to regenerate it again. No, that's <laughs> you're too high. <laughs> that's so funny. All right, let's try it again. Grab her and then change the selection and then click generated fill and then put street view of New York city she's levitating yeah exactly <laughs> cutty says standing on top of the empire state building like she's king kong absolutely that is honestly i hope everybody starts their day off that strong you know that's such a great thursday vibe all right okay it's so this is kind of what i was talking about what i was worried about with in uh, the current state of like the renders right now we see we get a little bit of artifacting happening at this current state and that's totally fine it just makes it harder for like city views if you don't look too hard it works better I think we would probably get some better um, let's try it again but like as a forest I think we might get more more better from like natural scenes right now because it's a little bit less rigid all right let's do same thing generative fill and then do uh hiking trail through forest generate Oh, Crystal says if you contract the subject selection with by about 20 pixels and then invert it, the AI integrates better the subjects and the environments. Oh, that does make sense. That's why her hands are less good. But anyways, just as a quick kind of test concept, <laughs> you can see like just really quickly what it's looking like with her there, um, which is honestly like pretty solid and all we have to do is go in and grab her out of I already have one isolated as well so let's just pull her up and then what I'm gonna do here is uh, let me just mask her out see what happens Let me just remove her from this image now. I'm going to use generative fill to just fill in her spot now. Cool. So now all I need to do is just plop her in there. It looks really good. I mean, obviously, we could even just you know, adjust our own levels if we wanted to. Uh, for like an image like this, I would just go in and maybe just do like a, a curves or a color balance and just add a tiny bit more green into the image. 
uh, and then just alt click so that it's only affecting the layer with her on it. So you can see right now she had a lot more sun on the other image. Uh, so it was a lot more yellows and reds. Just by going in and then adding a tiny bit more green, she starts to be a little bit more part of this scene. So super duper easy changes. And you can see from like beach scene to forest scene just took like no time at all. So really cool stuff. I love that you can do this so quickly within Express. Or sorry, within Photoshop. We're not in the Express scene yet. Uh, but also like cool things like this is another Adobe stock asset I grabbed earlier. Um, something like uh, like a boat even, like if I want more of this foreground on the boat, it gives us a lot of opportunity to start messing with that there. I'll just go in here and then do the fill as well, generate a fill, generate, bada bing, bada boom. And without any, any real wait for it, you start to get more of that boat foreground, which is really, really awesome. And three, there we go, look at that. And you can't, there's like really very, I don't know, it's really hard to tell that this was just filled in, like nobody's gonna notice this. And it also does a great job of keeping the focal length going on in the image. So you start to get a little bit of that blur in the foreground and then while the subject is perfectly crisp and then obviously depth in the background. So it's killer, I mean, this is, pretty awesome it's pretty awesome and if you don't like it you can always generate you know different versions of it you've got three options and then you can ask it to do more as well um, I feel like this is too clean I'm like that's probably really nice the first one honestly like that's great so that's solid that's cool all right so I think what we'll do here is we can grab her uh, what we'll do is we'll uh, just grab both of these, put them together, command E to merge them together. Uh, I don't have to, but I can, I'm just gonna do it. And then what I'm gonna do is grab my libraries tool and bring my libraries into this panel and then go to my stonks. Where's my stonks library? Nani. All right, well, I'll just put in the Keith Herring one. All right, generative fill goes in there. Let me actually just do travel. Travel, gal, boat. And then I'm just gonna drag it in. And then I put it in my library, boom. And now I go into Express and then just go get started. I can either pull in my PSD or my PDF if I want to, um, or I can just upload it. So what I could do, eh, we'll do that in a second. We'll just go open. I will do like a square one by one for like a social post online. And then we can just start going. We can either take a template. Actually, let's take a template. Travel. Let's see what Instagram stories we got. So we've got these assets, it's like this. So if you're seeing these little crowns over here, let me zoom in. These crowns means that it's part of your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. If you haven't used Express before, it is an entirely free program. It does get better if you have Adobe Creative Cloud already uh, because you get free access to these, to these templates and stock assets inside of it as well. And you can also start to integrate uh, your linked PSDs, your PDFs, and your Illustrator files. So you can link and work with them just like you would your normal libraries. So that's super, super helpful. So just something to think about if you haven't already upgraded your plan. So I'm going in here. Tourists don't know where they've been. Tur travelers don't know where they're going. So cool, we've got a quote. What we're gonna end up doing is actually just removing this uh, image background, image, delete, Mr. Image, all right, whatever. We'll grab this image, upload from device, and then we can grab the, uh, 
Oh yeah, it's gonna be my stuff, I think. Yep, yeah, brands and libraries. Get out of my Francis Harvey one. Go back to my Keith Haring brush set one, which is my default. And then I'm gonna grab her. So now this is a linked asset in my library. So if I do change something in this image, it will update real time. Cool, so we got her in the image there. And then I'm gonna pull that quote above it. Maybe I'll put, actually put the quote below it. And then what I'm gonna do with this text here is I'm gonna go in here and add some shadow effect just to make it a little bit more legible. Boom. I go darker on that. Boom. Now this feels like a like a traditional, you know, um, like motivational poster thing. This like scripty hand lettering type. So that's fun. Um, we can pull that in whenever we want. Umicorn's having dinner. Nice, yummy. What are you eating tonight, Umicorn? All right, so cool image there. All right, so if we want more, we can also go in and um, add some more uh, pages to this if we want. Top right of your screen, boom. We can add, you know, a different travel photo now. Let's see what we can do. Uh, I've got some more assets. Oh, one of the things I wanted to show y'all, I know it's not travel related, but it's this image. Um, I love like kitchen scenes like this. I think they're super cool. I think that they become even cooler with generative AI. So the cool thing is we've got, you know, this gourd here and some cabbages and she's cutting up some carrots and things. So we have a really good sense of scale. Um, right now I'm looking at this photo. I'm like, okay, there's some interesting foreground area over here. So what I'm going to do is actually just grab, uh, like what I think is a size of like an item. So maybe I want to just put like a generative fill and then I'll put like coffee cup. And what it's going to do is it's going to try to look at your color, depth of field, everything, and try to match the lighting and put the object in there. I will warn you, if you are using the generative fill like this and using a marquee tool, it will try to fill the entire generative fill box. So here's your coffee cup. Looks pretty good. Perspective's a little off on it, but what I wanted to show you is like, this one's probably the closest, but the shadow's a little bit hard. We, could, we can retouch that ourselves if you want. Um, below, below us says, Behance just loaded me that Alex is streaming now. Just now, silly Behance. Well, welcome to the stream just now. Um, we're doing generative fill today, but I want to show you how comically large you can make a coffee cup in this environment if you accidentally make your marquee tool too big. So it'll be like coffee, coffee, cup. Let's see. It's going to try its best to fill the entire marquee now. So something to watch out for. You definitely don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you're trying to like keep the correct ratio of like what's around there. See, that's the, that is a gigantic coffee cup. This is perfect, yum. Um, if you're having a very slow start to your day, maybe you need this size coffee. So something to think about. Make sure that you don't do this when you're, you know, unless that's the size coffee cup you wanna do. All right, so what we can do here is, all right, so she's got some, you know, she's got some, some fruits and vegetables. Let's see, maybe we'll just put like, um, like a fruit basket or a pile of vegetables. Boom. <laughs> Honestly, like, I think with just some, like, oh, that's kind of nice, actually. Um, it's pretty impressive that you can quickly just pull this in here. Like, that's pretty sweet. So she's got some images in there, or assets in there. Wow, words are so hard. 
she's we've got some greens in there now for her i think you start to see sometimes the ai gets it right sometimes it feels a little bit weird i think at a quick glance this works otherwise it looks like a cucumber and avocados uh but we can always try to generate it again it's a pan of lasagna we could do a pan of lasagna let's see what happens with that <laughs> okay all right let's do pan of lasagna generate give me the pan of lasagna Annika says, OMG, that looks like a healthy image. It is a healthy image. I feel so much healthier already. Uh, now with the lasagna, though, I'm getting pretty hungry. Is that the best one, I think? Yeah, I think that's the best one. I... Good idea for the, the pan of lasagna. I think, as you're saying, uh, I think you're right. It was too healthy of an image. We need to get some some lasagna in there. Yeah, Cody says, now I want to eat lasagna. I do too. I am, I wasn't hungry, and now, now I am. So pretty cool. Uh, we do start to miss that sink. It goes bye-bye, but I think you probably just can't tell. Uh, if we are missing that sink, we can also just like ask it to go away. Uh, let's just group this real quick and then, oh, it's, all right, group, boom, uh, command J, undo that. Then what I'm just gonna do here is just merge them all together. And then let's see if I can just remove the sink. Cause who who really needs a sink when you're cooking? <laughs> Everybody's talking about lasagna now. This is great. But can we add text on top? You know the font you're gonna pick. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. This is is this what you're wanting, Annika? Annika's lasagna. Let's see here. Um, comic papyrus. So you just throw that in there. Obviously, that's pretty cool and everything. Um, you know what? I think we can do better than this though. Let's hold on. I'm gonna get some. Boom, red. How do we make this better? Everybody knows all your design needs are much better when you add some more bevel and emboss. Soften, boom, boom. Inner shadow, satin, great. Great, color overlay, pattern overlay. Let's do all of it. All right. You might be like, wow, Alex, why are you doing pattern like that? And that's just really ugly, isn't it? You'd be like, yes, yes, you're right. But instead of using comic papyrus and floral type, what if, what if, what if I could show you a beautiful text tool, text effects. We're going to do uh, lasagna. Lasagna text effects. Give me a lasagna. Boopity boppy. All right. And it goes lasagna I'm going to make this way smaller eh. and it cuz lasagna all right this is looking like a pop tart not like a lasagna so give me uh embellished maybe maybe it'll give me some Pasta, pasta sauce. Let's see if we can get some pasta sauce. Red, red pasta sauce. Let's see what we can get. Why does it look like a pop tart? Tint. Let's go red. Show me. Okay. Uh. 
load more. I'm going to, let's see here, pasta sauce and noodles, pasta, bread, delicious. <laughs> Cody says it does look like a berry pop tart. It does look like a berry pop tart working on it. <laughs> let's see here, embellished. Now let's see if we can get realistic back in this mix. Show me the pasta. Pop-tarts are questionable, that's your hot take? Oh, no, no, no. I mean, they are in terms of pretty much everything, but <laughs> a s'mores Pop-Tart frozen is pretty awesome. If you've never done a frozen Pop-Tart and always do it hot, that's the take. All right, let's see here, we got I'm not loving this yet. I need more sauce. Uh, red sauce. Looks like it's not what I want at all. Uh, uh, spaghetti sauce. <laughs> I like how you put delicious in the prompt. You know, I'm trying to get the AI to start thinking with its stomach and not its head, okay? Delicious as a prompt, it's more for me to convey that it has to be good. Nakoti says, now it looks like a crime scene. It did look like a crime scene, I'm trying. All right, you know what? You know what, chat. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go into, we're gonna just, all right. You know what, let's, okay, ah, maybe this will save it. We're working on it. All right, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna just, <laughs> all right, perfect, great, awesome, perfect. All right, what we're gonna do here is download this as a PDF. Uh, actually, we don't need it as a PDF, we'll just download it as a PNG. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to grab that PNG Okay, that's not helpful. I'm gonna grab it into Photoshop. And then we're gonna pull it. <laughs> Why did you give me a white PNG? I don't, I don't understand. Download, okay, whatever. We'll do is that PDF. Maybe if you tell it to do a strawberry Pop-Tart, I'll give you lasagna. Thank you, Oliver. I think that's probably it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we can also try it with, we'll just keep, we'll keep trying. I don't want to be accused of being a quitter. All right, uh, let's see here, Pop, let's see here. Cherry Pop-Tart. Realistic, of course. I know, I know. Gotta do the no fill. Okay, all right, guys, all right. The pop tart's starting to look uh, very, very sus. All right, uh, pop tart's all right. Let's see here. Let's do. What was the other one? Uh, I think Pam said uh, lasagna noodle. Lasagna. Lasagna is one of those words that I look at when I spell it, and I always think that I misspelled it immediately. Uh, oh, actually, that's not it's not bad. That's okay. All right. Look at that Pam with the winning suggestion on prompts. Pam is a genius, and she's new here. Lasagna casserole. We can try that as well. Let's just. Maybe we also need to try like a burnt cheese. Casserole. 
Nope, unsupported language. All right, uh, lasagna. All right, burnt cheese. Burnt cheese. Marinara sauce, that's a good idea too. Burnt cheese might give us that, we'll see. Ew, cherry. Yeah, uh, we're not saying that the cherry Pop-Tart's the best, all right? We're just saying I needed that color. Burnt cheese is closer to like what a lasagna topping looks like. What up, Luciano? Welcome to the stream. Steve is saying caramelized. Oh, hot take. Is it caramelized or caramelized? And the answer is caramelized. All you caramel people are wrong. All right, what was the other one? Uh, burnt cheese, <laughs> Uh Let's see here. Uh, and it says, I'm not sure I like this text effect on my name. Yeah, my bad. Marinara sauce is one. Marinara sauce. I don't know if I spelled that right. We'll try that. Yep, yeah, it's giving us back the pop tart look. All right. All right. What? Well, anyways, we'll just download this as a PD, PNG now. And then we have plenty to play with, and Annika is going to love all of them. So thank you so much, Annika, for always being the. <laughs> The disciple of actually what if we also just did entire lasagna generate carol pearl says there used to be a morning show called burnt toast and coffee interesting Definitely an invigorating name. Let's see what we can do with this. <laughs> oh, you're so close. You can do it. Oh, there you go. One, two, three. Oh, wow. It's crazy that this is just AI generated and it looks like <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy that this is just AI made because it looks like something that like my friends that are like really bad at taking food photography would take a photo of and be like isn't this beautiful I'd be like it looks like you uh, took a photo of your food way too close but <laughs> it looks like a real photo uh, so let's get in there. Let's grab the PNG. Honestly, I think we need to actually just expand the canvas even more. Let's start seeing what the AI gives us. And then I'm going to just grab this. Boom, boom, boom. And then generate a fill. Maybe we'll get some nice, the first one looks like a bad restaurant menu photo. Exactly. It's like when, when you're going on like Yelp or whatever, and you're like looking for food photos and you just see like that photo, you know, and you're like, man, this is so close. Like it looks delicious, but your photo of it's not good. <laughs> it looks it, you know, ah, there you go. Look at that. That looks like a very awesome spread for a dinner party. So we're gonna grab that um, Annika's lasagna, see which one we like the most. Burnt cheese coming in clutch. I think we can take the, the middle option is probably the strongest. So I'm just gonna actually just like copy paste it out Oh, it's a uh, rasterized, rasterized layer. 
And then I'm just gonna clean up some of these little issues real quick on it by masking them out. Um, just brush this out really, really quickly. Just made a layer mask and now I'm hiding some of the little filigree and filaments that aren't working for us. Annika's lasagna. Boom. Did I mean spell it? Do I not know how to spell lasagna? The answer is probably yes. Lasagna. No, I did it right. Whew. Scared me, Oliver. Scared me. You almost got me. All right. Uh, and obviously, knowing Annika, she loves loves having drop shadows on things. So, I'm gonna go into my blending options. Drop shadow. That's probably not gonna count it because I've got the mask on, whatever. All right, Annika's lasagna. Thank you, Oliver. Now I'm learning all the things about lasagna. Annika's starting a new lasagna restaurant. This is her branding chef's kiss. Perfect. <laughs> I've already given Annika a cupcake uh, bakery business that I hope she's taking seriously. Um, haven't seen her do anything with that yet. But now that this has gone down the lasagna path, I do feel like we need to start incorporating this stuff. So, um, what I'm going to do here is actually merge the two lasagna images together that we got from AI and this, and then name. So I'm going to do these two things and then I'm going to group them. And then I'm going to go in the library and I'm going to just drag this in or Let's see what my size is. No, that's what I'm gonna do actually. Annika's and then we have options. So we can either <laughs> Shaw says, wait, you gave that to me after Annika defaulted. That's right, I'm sorry. I forgot to do the, the paperwork and you're right, you're right. We you're now the owner of the cupcake business. She's busy with other assets. You never got the branding assets? Oh, lies. Annika is now making cu cupcake snacks and lasagna. Exactly. I would never betray you, Sean. Don't worry. All right, let's get back into Express. Your stuff, brand assets. And... I'm losing my lasagna. You know what? I'll just bring it in. Let's see what size uh, Photoshop file this is. Save as. Actually, yeah, let's do that. Saving that real quick. Let's see how big it is. All right, it's 882 megabits. So what I'm just gonna do is uh, save as a smaller version after I make it smaller, image size. Uh, let's do 144, uh, let's do 72. Still a huge file, so I think we'll still be, we'll be fine. I'm just making this really small so that we don't have any issues uploading directly into um, Express. You have a 100 megabit um, upload limit for PSDs and Illustrator files. So that's what I'm doing here. Boom. And then now in Express, what I can do is just go straight to the, uh, boop, boop, boop. Luciana says, I just couldn't find a good way of using these AI generated stuff as assets to compose visual identities, but it is great on speeding up the workflow with generative tools. 
Um, I would say your best bet, Luciano, for using the AI is for increasing like walls and billboards and doing mockups that way. Um, or images where you can probably play something in there and then like wrap it around it. That's the best use so far. Um, but yeah, workflows on like retouching and other things like the AI stuff is super good for that. But all right, so what we're gonna do is click get started. I'm gonna take Annika Small and then upload that in here. And it's gonna upload that PSD directly into Express and then we're gonna be able to start messing with stuff in there. Easy peasy. It's uploading. It's doing the think. Does anybody have any good lasagna recipes now that we're all hungry? Keep keep on uploading. All right. While it's uploading, we can still keep messing around with things. Let's see here. I've got these assets and it goes. Let's see. Lasagna. Let's see what lasagna photos we have. Oh my lordy. These are all in the free section, by the way. So we can start playing with it really nicely. Um, I mean, I'm really hungry now. Um, I'm trying to think. Ooh, that's cool. Is this a template? It's a vector. All right. I know that's not the point of this stream, so I'm just going to keep that for my, my personal use. But man, that's so cool. And look, it's free. It's free. Cody says, I can't believe uh, Alex is doing this free branding package for you. Because <laughs> yeah, that's me neither. Yeah, you know, I'm feeling really generous today, y'all. Um, like a great example is me downloading this free asset from Adobe Stock <laughs> and just slapping Annika's name on it. Um, I'm also, wow, there's so many cool, oh gosh. Oh, that's a paid asset. That's fine too, it's cool. All right, I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab this image as well. License for free, um, and we'll pull it in Express. Oh, it's still doing some thinking. Holy moly, get in there. We only got like 10 minutes of stream left, so make sure you, if you have any questions, let me know. We've got like five minutes, really, six minutes. Let's see. Illustrator, we've got, trying to get this into Express so that we can show you some editing stuff in there. Where did? Cool. Let's see, is this editable? No. Wow. It's an interesting build. Okay. Okay. All right. Bontic Italian. Let's do Annika's. What is it? What are we calling your uh, lasagna place? He says, I think in a, I need to make lasagna for dinner. And yep. I think we're all wanting some lasagna now. Uh, make sure if you are uh, making lasagna tonight that you tag both Annika and me and your Behance projects once you take really, really close up photos of it. Uh, that'd be amazing. Comic, Papyrus, Annika's. What are we calling it? Annika's. Pasta. I don't know. I don't, Annika's. I guess we'll just keep calling it lasagna. Boom, boom. Do some text effect. Uh. <laughs> uh. Fish eye. Nope. <laughs> Wave. I feel like the original one is like this rise thing. We'll do more of a bend. Cool. Annika's lasagna. Let me just do a quick color steel swap. Uh, 
What are you doing? And then we can increase the stroke on the outside. Whatever. All right, let's a start. All right, let's see if we got Express back in. Converting. All right, it's doing its thinking. Joshua was saying yesterday was all about pizza, today's all about lasagna. Yeah, we like our carbs over here. Yeah, it's pretty great. Erica says, I don't know. You, have, you can have all the creative freedom with the name. Oh, man, so hard to put me on blast to, to come up with a really interesting... <laughs> Annika's lasagna. Okay, it's a little bit messy. All right. Don't judge me, chat. That's perfect. This is like very much a graphic design is my passion style um, image. Well, we've got like three minutes now. I'm just trying to figure out what to do. Old office text effect. OMG, the tangent at the top of the A is so bad. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm just making everything. It's, all right, open an editor. All right, great, we got it, we're back. Carbo load for these Adobe Live days. Exactly, Wade, Wade gets it. All right, so this is bringing in the asset. Oh, look at that. See, as you can tell, by bringing in that Photoshop document inside of Express, we now have the layers that we can play with here. We can move it around if we need to or want to. We've got the background element as well, which is super great. Um, and now we can start throwing in you know, images and things like we, we could want if we want to. Let's find some more lasagna images. Um, just grab this, put it in here, cool. Uh, and then we can like do some adjustments, some filters on it if we want to. I don't really think we need to. Um, we can crop it. Annika loves lasagna so much that Obviously, she's going to include a heart crop of it. It's very important. Uh, we can also um, do some text to image. So we'll do like a square text to image. Oh, we've got one minute. Um, lasagna heart. Lasagna. <laughs> Crystal says, ha, I think I'm dead. Graphic design is my passion. Yep, that's that's what I'm doing today. <laughs> the theme. Um, yeah, oh, that's cool. That's what I needed, not this cropped version. That that shows that Annika just cares so much about the craft that she puts forward every day with her lasagna making skills. So we'll start to do a really, really quick recap. Um, we ended up playing around in Adobe Stock, increasing your... Uh, canvas widths and dimensions, generative fill, you can add in anything you want. You can change out the backgrounds really quickly. Simple things like a little curves adjustment is such a good way to just bring some of the foreground and background elements together if it's not doing it automatically for you. Um, we didn't do any billboard mockups today. Um, we did start messing around with Express and the generative Firefly uh, text filters, which is super fun. We had a lot of fun with carbo loading this stream. Um, hope you guys enjoyed it. Text to image and express is also great. Generative fill and Photoshop is awesome. Make sure you download the beta in your creative cloud. Uh, but yeah, thank you everyone. Make sure you stick around. Adobe Live goes from nine to two. So make sure you stick around, hang out with everybody. Bye-bye everybody. It was a pleasure. See y'all later. Bye-bye.